Okay, so I want to work now on this little Kung Fu Panda character search program. And there's some start code here that, that open up. Um, and we're going to focus now on different types of if statements. Um, we've done binary, but we'll talk about unary and chain. And then also how to do case insensitive input with two lowercase and multiple valid inputs with or. We've kind of, that should be easy. We've talked about or quite a bit already. Uh, I don't know if we'll get this all done in one video. We'll see, but uh, let's get started. So again, download the start code, open it up. Um, this is what it looks like. The idea is you type in the name of a character, hit search, and then it should update the page to show their image, their name, and a quote from them. And just for easy reference, I wrote down, um, I've got images for these characters here, Poe, Crane, Mantis, Monkey, Tigress, and Viper. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, we should be able to get images for those and then the quotes for them as well, okay? So the HTML is pretty straightforward, an H1, a paragraph here with an input element and a button. Um, divs, I don't think I've talked too much about divs before. Divs are used generally just as a container for other elements, right? And you can put block elements inside of them, like headings and paragraphs. So there's this imaginary div. Now, now by default, divs have no styles to them. It's just a way to group elements together. So the image, the H2, and the paragraph are inside of this div. And the way we're going to update the page is by basically changing the inner HTML of this div. So it'll have a different image, different heading, different um, paragraph. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, there's some style sheets to style stuff, but whatever. Let's make our, the start code doesn't have a JavaScript, so main.js. And of course, we've got to make sure we load that. So we'll do our script source. And do main.js and we'll add that defer because we want to make sure the page loads before I add my event listener to the button. Okay, search BTN, search in, and that should be good to start off with. So we'll do our title, um, Kung Fu Panda Character Search by Mr. V. Um, and now we'll do our button event listener. So get the element with ID, search BTN, add event listener, click, and I, I like to just call it a BTN clicks function, like so. And I'm just going to do a little console.log high, just to make sure that, hey, it says high, right? Just to make sure that that event listener is working. Okay, now all of our code, and you know what, actually, I need these quotes actually in my JavaScript. So let's put that here and I'll control forward slash to comment them out. Must have missed the line. There we go. Okay, and I think I can actually close this now. All right, so let's start by getting the get the search input, right? So let, uh, let's go name actually, be assign get element by ID search in was the ID and we'll go dot value and that can be a string that's totally great and now we're going to test the um, the search name and basically based on what it is I want to put something here so let's start with the one we're most familiar with right if something is true do this sorry do this else do this right that's that binary so if name is equal to po let's say right so if i type po in here po and hit search um, i want to do something well what do i want to do what i'd like to do is get the element with the id character info and i basically want to replace all of this i'm going to copy that I just highlighted that and hit control C. So I'm going to do document.getElement by ID, um, character info. And I want to set the inner HTML to be assigned. And I'm going to do a backtick string like that. And to make this look better, I'm going to hit enter to go on multiple lines. And then we're going to paste in all of this stuff. Okay. And for the time being, I just want to make this a little bigger. Okay, and I'm going to tab this over as well. So remember, this is this from here to here is just one string, but I'm using my backticks 
because what I want to do is I want to replace things, right? I still want to have an image element with the source of images slash, oh, but I don't want a question mark dot png. I want to do po.png, right? So I'm going to replace question. I'm going to use my dollar sign. I'm going to put, um, oh, no, what am I doing? I don't have any variables. I just actually legit, legit just go po.png. So I was thinking about inserting the, oh, I guess, yeah, we could have like inserted the name. Oh, but if they type capitals, yeah, no, let's just go with po here. That's great. And then we can keep the alt the, the same. And then inside of here, I'm going to just go po, like so. And then po's quote, we're going to replace this with, um, what does he say, buddy? Buddy, I am the Dragon Warrior. Okay, yeah, that looks great. Yeah, so if the name is Poe, I want the image to be Poe.png, I want the heading to to say Poe, and I want the quote to be Buddy, I am the Dragon Warrior. Okay, and then else, I'm just going to copy and paste this entire thing, and else I want it to be question mark dot png I want this to be a bunch of question marks and I want this to be a bunch of hyphens because the else would mean that I didn't type in po so I didn't recognize the name so I'm just gonna by default right if I don't recognize the name the else would be the kind of the catch-all that's just gonna output the question mark okay let's make this smaller so hopefully if I type in po Name will be that value. If name equals po, I do that. Ta-da! Awesome. Okay, and if it's something that's not po, it becomes a question mark. And if it is po, then it becomes this. Right? The image changes, the heading changes, and that changes. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, now here's the fun part. So instead of just doing well, first of all, actually, we could delete this else. Uh, hold on, why didn't Prettier move that over here? Is my Prettier working? Okay, you know what, Prettier probably when it's a string like this, um, it says maybe you want spaces and stuff like that, and maybe you don't. Um, so yeah, that's probably why Prettier doesn't fix that. But my point was, I actually want to delete this entire else. And this is now called a unary unary if statement and it's basically yeah there's no binary it's not an if else there's no two paths to choose it's either there's one path and you either do it or you don't and you just continue on with the rest of the program which is nothing for us but anyway if this is true you do it otherwise nothing you just carry on okay so right now if i type po great it'll work but if i don't type po nothing changes Right? So if I don't typo, nothing nothing happens. There's no else to catch it. Okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to teach you was a chained selection statement. Because maybe I want more than one path or two paths. Maybe I want three or four or five or six um, blocks of code to choose from. So to do that, we do our if, and then we do an else. But instead of ending this right away, we do another if. Right, so if name is Poe, do this, else if, and then I do another test, if name is equal to um, Mantis, maybe. Well, what do I want to do if it's Mantis? I'm going to copy and paste this. It doesn't quite tab properly, and I want to change the image to Mantis.png, change the title to Mantis, and then the quote here is Fear the Bug, like so. Okay, so now this is, if this is true, do this, else if this is true, do this. And if it's not Poe or Mantis, I don't do anything. Okay. So Poe would give me that. Mantis would give me that. And that would do nothing. Right? There we go. Now, I think having that else would be a great idea, kind of that catch-all. So you can do a chain selection statement without an else, um, but you can also do it with the else, 
and that's where we'll add the question mark.png and our question marks here and our dashes here. So that else is kind of the final, like the catch-all, right? If none of my, if none of the paths in my chain selection statement are true, then I must do this. Okay, and it's kind of neat with chain selection statements because it'll actually, once this is true, it doesn't bother checking the rest. It's only if this is false that it goes to the else. So it's pretty efficient that way. So let's insert another else if here. So I'm going to go else if. Close like that. Um, oh yeah, it's not because I got to put something in here. So else if name is equal to, I don't know. Let's do uh, a monkey. And if that's the case, then we'll copy and paste this and change this to monkey.png. The name will be monkey, and his quote is he. Should hang out. Save. Okay, brilliant. Um, all right, so po. Let's see if that works. Right, so this is true. It does this code and skips the rest. If I go mantis. Right, the first one's false, so it goes to the else, and then it does this if statement, and it's mantis. That's true, so it does this and skips the rest. If it's monkey. Then we get this is false, so it goes to the else. This is false, so it goes to the else. This is true, so it does this. And then this is false, so it goes to the else. This is false, so it goes to the else. This is false, so it goes to the else. And that's the final catch all does the question mark. Phew! Okay, so chain selection statements are great when you want to select one path out of three or more. If it's just you want to select between two paths, you use a binary. But if you want to do three or more paths, a chain selection statement works great. And that else is always kind of at the end as your final catch-all. Okay, I think that's good for now. Um, I'll do, in the next video, we'll talk about case and sensitive input. And Because if I type, uh, accidentally did PO like that, it wouldn't work, right? So we'll fix that. Okay, hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you next video.